Hi, I'm Carl from OSP, and this is Communicate, Connect, Grow, the OSP podcast. On today's episode, we're talking about the editing code CRISP, or getting to the point, about our podcast. If you want to be a more effective writer, a more transparent editor, develop clearer strategic thinking, or learn from our network of expert friends and colleagues, that's what we're here for. We divide our episodes across three themes, communicate, connect, and grow. This is a communicate episode, and we're talking about getting to the point in your writing with our editing code CRISP, or C-R-I-S-P. The CRISP editing code falls into the flow and readability section of what Jeffrey A. McGuire, the creator of the original version of our system, calls our Matrioska Russian doll editing process. It's about using the fewest words to effectively convey meaning. In our documentation about this code, it says, write sentences that are spare and concise. Use occasional longer sentences to vary the rhythm of your writing. Aim for active voice, rhythm, and pace. Avoid flowery, long-winded words and sentences. My name is Liz, and I am a communications consultant at OSP, which means that I write a lot of content for our clients, like blog posts, case studies, landing pages, you name it. The CRISP code is one that we use a lot as a kind of positive editing note. We will often comment on a sentence that's particularly crisp, concise, to the point, really gets its subject matter right away when we see it in a piece of writing. Or if we want to kind of improve a piece of writing that we think might be a little bit long-winded, we might use the CRISP code to suggest a shorter way of saying the same thing. G'day, I'm Felicity Brandt. I am a communications consultant at Open Strategy Partners, and I work asynchronously with the rest of my team. I'm based in Australia and I am asleep while everyone else is awake. So when I get up, I help them with their day jobs by reviewing and editing their work. So I'm like a friendly elf. (laughs) So CRISP is a code. It's a very important code. It's a very powerful code. And it's I most frequently use as an editor because we all strive for crisp. So crisp is about writing concisely and making every word in your sentence count. We don't want it to be dry. So hopefully those words have a bit of life and color. I'm Christine Bueller. And I'm a communications consultant at OSP, which means I do a lot of writing and editing in my day-to-day. The editing code CRISP is really just about making sure your writing is tight and concise. I think it's pretty common in a lot of marketing writing for there to be redundancies or to be filler. Um, And so... At OSP, we try to avoid that and we try to make sure we're being clear and we're being to the point and we're not boring the reader, right? So we don't want to go on and on. Um, So CRISP is really helpful for that. Hi, I'm Jeffrey A. McGuire. Most people call me Jam. I am a co-founder of Open Strategy Partners and I came into the company with a lot of the original ideas about writing and communication. So the entire editing code system is somehow, uh, it came out of my brain at at some point. Crisp, it comes up a lot. And I think the original name I had for this code was snappy or snap. Crisp writing is tight and efficient and fun. And in any case, when we do product communications, we need to say what we need to say, get out what's important, and then get out of people's way. I like to use the CRISP code to point out really good sentences and really highlight where writers are communicating clearly and concisely. I also like to use it if I if I see something that's maybe using too many prepositional phrases. 
I think at its most basic level, it's about cutting words away, uh, removing length. So if you're using five words where two will do, that is one way to achieve crisp. But I think that is a bit reductionist to say, because I think crisp also captures using active voice, looking at rhythm and pace in a sentence and as part of an overall piece. We want colour and life, so your word choice is important with CRISP. When I'm using the CRISP code as an editor, I think it's helpful for other people because just in general as a writer, you can be a little too close to the subject matter or to the piece in general. You know, when you're editing something, it really helps to have someone else do it, someone else who's looking through it. As a writer, sometimes you just don't see when you're going on for too long or, you know, it might even go slightly against your regular writing style. And so having an editor use crisp, they're going to point things out that you probably sort of just accidentally passed over. I notice it most often in headers. There's a, there's a real trick to titles and headers in articles. And uh, in both cases, there's a temptation to be clever, which is nice. But especially in a title, we really need to tell the entire story of what we're writing about. And remember that in this digital age, we're, we're playing to the search engines, we're playing to those results, and we need to be extremely clear about what it is. And we've only got a few characters to do that. Within the headers of an article, I think a little bit more cleverness, some humor is, is acceptable, but they still need to be tight. And I look for words uh, or, or words pop out at me quite often um, of, of which, for, and so on can often be turned around and put into much tighter constructions. <laughs> is usually um, never in my first drafts, but when I'm doing kind of a read through of any writing I'm going to turn in, I'll just notice certain phrases that maybe don't add much to a sentence and then I'll take it out. So as part of the writing process, it's more part of the self editing process. So the way I help people with crisp is I tell them when they are crisp. So if, <laughs> if they have been crisp, I give them a plus plus on that code for positivity. I look for opportunities to tighten, to elevate. So I would say crisp is more useful in the, I don't know, second draft stage or the editing stage. To be honest, it's not so important when you're getting your first ideas out and when you're stitching together a story. It really becomes important as you go along and, and start to self-improve and self-edit before you hand it off to someone else. So... I think it's I think it's important to be aware of what you're doing and it's it's always great to develop better habits um and try and get you know better stuff out the first time but it's maybe secondary when you're doing the writing in the early stages of of creating something <laughs> I think that readers like crisp sentences because they feel like you're not wasting their time. You're not just trying to add to the word count. They feel like everything that you say to them really means something. So in general, it's just more pleasurable to read. My method is to get my thoughts out, but certainly when I'm self-editing, coming back to Titan, absolutely. Because crisp is what we strive for. It's what we aim for. In this world of really minimal attention span, you need to be compelling. That means everything has to be crispy. Crisp is important to readers because you want to acknowledge that you're not wasting the reader's time. And I think crisp is really helpful there because you're getting to the point and I think Getting to the point is just a way of acknowledging that the reader's time is also important. Also acknowledging that you want the reader to stay engaged. And if you're going on and on about something, you're going to lose the reader's interest. And, you know, as a writer, that's pretty much the worst thing that can happen. As professional communicators, we at OSP focus on product communication. We're in a role to convince and inform. And we need 
to get that done efficiently and clearly. So we have a, we have a, a lot of focus on helping people absorb the information. And honestly, making something crisp means choosing really the essential words and putting them in an order that is clear and easy to consume, maybe enjoyable, maybe bright, maybe snappy, maybe fun. But in the end, I am trying to help the reader inform herself about whatever it is that I'm writing and choose to then follow my suggestion to buy or test or demo or or, or what have you, this, this product or service or open source software package that I'm writing about. So when we're crispy, we're helping people get what they need to know and maybe on a good day, make it a little bit more enjoyable to read it. Crisp is really important because it's about clarity, possibly also a little bit about trust, but probably the biggest one there is clarity. If we're looking at some of the pillars of open strategy partners, empathy, clarity, trust, I would say crisp links to clarity. And that is important because readers will drop away. They're not going to keep reading if they are not compelled to read, if they're not interested in what you're saying. So if you have too many words to get to your point. If you're not crisp, your readers are going to bounce. They're going to bounce. They're out of there. I think uh, crisp is also just a good reminder to keep the pace of your writing interesting. Vary your sentences. Sometimes it helps to read things out loud. Um, It can be a good indicator of crisp. And if you're reading it out loud and it doesn't sound good, then take another look at it and see what you can change. I hope you leave this episode being able to write a little more crisply, shall we say. How do you address making your writing tighter or snappier? Share your examples or questions with us via Twitter at open underscore strategy or email hello at openstrategypartners.com. This was one of the editorial codes we use at OSP. We'll be sharing more of them as we go. If you'd like to learn more in the meantime, come over to openstrategypartners.com. Have a look at our writer enablement workshops, case study offering, or get in touch to talk about your strategy or product communication needs. Thanks to everyone who contributed to this podcast. All the P's at OSP. Thanks to our clients who believe in us. Shout out to Patrick Gaumont for our high energy maple syrup flavored theme music. And to Mike Snow for additional horn arrangements. Thank you for listening and subscribing. About our three themes on the podcast. You'll hear from different members of the OSP team hosting episodes over time. Communicate. All things communication. We share how we tackle writing, editing, word choices, formats, processes, and more. Connect. In-depth conversations with interesting, smart people about who they are, what they do, and how they approach their life and work as communicators, technologists, and leaders. Grow. We cover strategic approaches to understanding and expressing the value of what you do, including tools, templates, and practical applications. We also feel strongly about building a mindful, positive, human-first culture at work. That's bound to pop up from time to time, too. This podcast is us figuring out communication, connection, and growing together. Subscribe now on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, or the podcast channel of your choice. Follow us, suggest guests and topics, ask us questions on social media. We are at open underscore strategy on Twitter. Until next time, thanks for listening to Communicate, Connect, Grow, the OSP Podcast.